Hi, I'm Andy Parr, and you're watching The Gadget Guru. With me is Robert Hitt, who's the training manager for Prevo. And today, we're talking DEF. So stay tuned, because that starts right now on The Gadget Guru. I'm here at the Prevo Service Facility in Jacksonville, Florida, and here with me is Robert Hitt. Now, Robert, I gave you a very brief introduction of your title. What do you do here at Prevo? Well, for Prevo, what I do is I'm in charge of customer training and uh, recently took over uh, network training for our techs in our branches. So I have a very large group of people to provide training to. Uh, we also provide training to motorhome rallies and motorhome events, tech talks, uh, where I met you. So uh, we, we keep pretty busy out here. When somebody like me goes into a private facility, you're the gentleman who trains the people that I'm dealing with in terms of you know, what's going on with specific buses, if you find a better way to fix something. Is that pretty much what you do? We keep them up to date on current technology, and yes, we give them everything from safety training to actual technical training on the vehicle. When we first met just a few weeks ago at a, conver at a converter rally, you know, we were having a conversation about DEF. Now, we know that on my 2014 X3, I can only fill DEF from one side. Um, and, you know, meaning that if I pull into a truck stop, unless I pull in backwards, I pretty much need to fill out of a container. You had given me some information I'd like to share today about the do's and don'ts in the proper ways to use DEF. But let's start by asking, what is DEF? So DEF, diesel exhaust fluid, it's an additive into our exhaust system that actually reduces NOx in the uh, exhaust stream. Now, was this a government mandated thing or, or what's the reason that, that newer coaches need to put DEF into, into the coach? All commercial vehicles uh, since 2010 are pretty much using this technology. So when you look at diesel engines and how we're reducing NOx, um, we switched from using 35% EGR down to about 10% EGR. So it makes the engine more efficient by using an after treatment, if you will, to reduce NOx rather than do in-cylinder NOx treatment. Now, I notice that on my control cluster that I have, you know, two basically level gauges. I have one for the diesel fuel, the other one for DEF. How often do I need to put DEF in and how much do I need to put in? So the, the tanks on all of our uh, buses in, in, uh, in motorhomes are a 16 gallon tank, basically 60 liters, so 15 and some change someplace in there. So what you want to remember is we have a 2 to 3 percent usage. Uh, higher altitude, cooler ambient temperatures means we may go to 4, even 5 percent usage. So you figure about 3 gallons for every 100 gallons of fuel. So about every two tank fulls fill up to be on the safe side. So one of the key things you want to do when looking at DEF is number one, date code. Number two, API approval. American Petroleum Institute, make sure it is blended to the proper mix for okay, and here it is on both vehicle things. use. Okay. So this is one of the key uh, decals that you want to look for. Just like when you're, when you're buying oil, fuel, anything else, you want to make sure that you're getting the, the correct fluid to put in there. So when you, when you look at DEF, we prefer to fill from the pump if we can. We know there's some challenges on certain model coaches because we only have a fill on one side. Um, but one of the things that we recommend is, is number one, don't reuse containers. Um, a couple of different things here that I'll point out to you. There is a, a paper cap, a paper seal inside <clears throat> this cap. Mm -hmm. We've had a couple of customers that have saved a little money by, D, uh, by reusing DEF jugs. What happens is this over time, it uh, deteriorates, gets into the DEF, gets into your system, and then we have a very big expense on cleaning out the system. So that little dirt or dust that gets in there can, can be a mess. And I think you said it can be expensive to that yeah. type of repair. It's, it's mostly the glue and, and the, the product that you have here that will deteriorate over time. So reusing the, the jugs is not really recommended if you're carrying DEF on the coach, which you should never do. It's available everywhere. Um, so just keep in mind when you, when you look at the cap of the container you're using, these are specified containers for DEF. They are marked with a date code because DEF has a shelf life. Mm -hmm. So those are some things that you want to consider. Okay, now what is the shelf life on that? 
depends on where it's stored. If you pull up to a station and they're setting outside in the sun, you got about a six month shelf life on this. If it's in a nice cool ambient 50 degrees, like you would be in an in-tank or an in-ground uh, container, mm -hmm. it would last up to uh, two years. Okay, I know on my coach that I typically, and again, I'm still, you know, I'm a newbie. That's why we're doing a newbie series. That I found out that I carry between two and four of these on the coach in a bed. Now, granted, it's going to get warm there, so I, that means I need to almost do an inventory system. That the first in is the first out. Don't don't sit there and just go the one that's easier to grab. Is that fair to say? Yeah, and, and again, I'm not a big fan of of carrying DEF. Okay, it's available everywhere. It's corrosive. If something were to happen and the container leak, you're going to have a big mess. You know, and I've noticed that it, when I'm pouring it, even on something, uh, you can probably look on, you know, here's a funnel I use. So I try to keep them clean. That if there is any residue, it kind of turns into a powder. Yes. It, and now that's a corrosive. Is that dangerous? We, we call that crystallization. Mm -hmm. So this is, if you were to handle it. This is when you're pouring it. Should yeah. I wear gloves when I'm using this? So. Number one, it's like a very, very, very strong household ammonia. So you get it in your eyes, it's going to burn. You get it on an open cut, it's going to burn. You don't want to uh, handle it for a long period of time without any protection. So it, there's nothing really hazardous about DEF as the handling if you're handling it properly. But obviously, if you get it on metal surfaces, it is corrosive. So the containers are specified for DEF, or you're going to find they're made out of a plastic material. The uh, metal looking nozzles that you'll see at the pumps, those are actually nickel plated so they won't corrode. Uh, we've seen uh, quite a few uh, fleet uh, operations use antifreeze pumps in their barrels of DEF, and what happens is those pumps corrode. And uh, so you, you want to make sure that whatever you're using is rated for DEF. Okay. You know, as stated, I carry this on my coat. So is there anything dangerous about carrying this on there as long as it's not leaking? We had one customer, and it was in, in a commercial uh, coach application mm -hmm. that stored DEF on top of their wheelchair lift. Mm -hmm. They went to a very cold climate. The DEF jugs are not designed to expand. So what happened is as the DEF started to freeze, it cracked the container and it got all over the top of the wheelchair lift and got into the wiring, got into the mechanisms, okay. and that was about a $20,000 mistake. So freezing could be a caution to the containers. Excessive heat, like you know, me living in Florida, that is going to reduce the shelf life. Now, again, speaking of shelf life, and this is something I've pointed out to you, and I want to say this to the manufacturers. Prevo doesn't manufacture this. There's a, you know, these are just the ones I have on here. There's no endorsement. I'm not saying one's better than another. But I notice on that brand over there, that Super Tech, they have very clearly marked on here an expiration date. On this Valvoline here, here's two. I believe they were purchased at the same time. One of these was from Walmart. The other two were from Amazon. When I look down at this right here, there's some kind of code. I should be. It's, we it's can't like you need a decoder tape. ring to figure out what the uh, date code is. Yeah, so we it, may have to go to their website to determine that. So, and, and you know, it's not only really safety. You know, I think they put this on to keep the retailers honest so that they know they need to be turning their inventory. But you know, it's funny. In the same load, oops, I moved this around. These are heavy. Here's another one. I couldn't find a date code on this either. So I think the trick is when you buy it, try to buy it from somebody who's turning their inventory pretty quickly. Okay, another thing I have to ask you about, and I realize you're not the manufacturer of this product or the containers, but if these manufacturers are listening, or even the ones who make them in the box, please come up with a better way to be able to take the DEF from the container and insert in your tank. And I'm going to show you why. You know, first of all, these things are heavy. I'm not a big guy. You know, you have to lift it up. I found out that using a funnel does help but having two people. Uh, is there any trick of putting this in without spilling it all over the place? There's not really. Um, the, the containers are very heavy because of the, the amount of fluid that you're putting in. And, and again, if the manufacturers are listening, it may be an advantage to have a handle back here. I, you know, well I agree top. with you. That would be good. Or possibly to have another vent cap. I think when I was reading the description of one of them online, it said had a had a vent cap. They were talking about this little rubber, this little rubber piece here. I yeah. did, let's go in and give it a shot. We we have the tank already opened here. Here. This one's just the closest here. And let's just kind of go through the steps. In case you've never done this, 
you know, I, oops, kind of open this up, take off the paper here. You have this thing. Now, my understanding is you want this rubber thing to be on the upper side so on it can breathe. Side That's to act basically as a vent. to. Oops. And one of the other things to look at, Andy, and, and if you notice this material, if we don't get it all off of there, that could cause some oh, problems in the tank. That's a good point. You, you, you know, have paper inside the, the top here. Our first line of defense on the DEF tank is we actually have a strainer filter that is built into the filler neck. So number one, that's going to catch any of this debris that maybe came from our fill neck. So during your regular ser service and maintenance, what's going to happen is the technician, when you do your once a uh, year service, your 12 month service on your DEF, is going to pull out this strainer and he's going to take a look and clean this with warm water. So really the service and maintenance on this portion is a physical check to see how much debris is down inside and maybe uh, maybe suggest some filling habit changes uh, if we find a lot of this uh, material packed up into it. The other part of this is there's a magnet built into this. So if I go into a DEF fill facility uh, for a commercial vehicle and I put that DEF handle into my fuel and I pull the handle, it shouldn't activate. Oh, okay. However, the magnet, the magnet in here will activate that trigger and it'll be able to pour DEF into my DEF tank. Okay, no, so here, as we know, this is our diesel cap. The blue one right here, um, this is for a Volvo engine. Okay, so I'm just going to take this. Now we need to have this where this blue is on the upper side. That's to allow air to get in. So here, let me try this. And I think your suggestion about putting a handle, but you notice when you first get it started, here I'll kind of set by, I hope the camera can see us. You know, it takes a while for the air. What I found, I almost have to let it gurgle a little bit. Yeah, and then it'll start pouring. But yeah, it's heavy. I didn't put this on a scale, but it's two and a half gallons. And you know, I gotta yep. tell you, of just course, since of, I'm doing it in front of you, it's not leaking right now. Yeah. So just out of curiosity, let's stop for a second. Okay. And and I'm just I'm just wondering. It's it's me thinking out loud that if we were to to start out. Let me see if we can loosen this up just a little bit. If to start out, we were to start this way, would that make life any easier? I don't know. Let's give it a try. In, in, yeah, again? I'm going to try with one person. Now we have to, is, have to come over here, kind of balance it, thread it in here. Because that brings the air to the top of the jug also. You know, let's see. You know, I know because I'm having to, well, Let's see, I, of course, I have to tilt it further to get it started, but we did use some out of here. You'll get to a point where you're going to need to flip it to get every little bit out, mm -hmm. but I think this might be a little easier for you to, you know, to I get the it. jug started. That, that might be a good trick. Again, if any of the manufacturers are watching, I welcome your comments below. Okay, any final words of wisdom on the use of DEF? I guess, you know, we need to say, now on Prevost's newer coaches, then you're, you're putting duals on Correct. that. Is that both on the new we, X3s we, we and heard, the H's? We heard the market loud and clear. In most commercial applications, the DEF is done back at the shop, so it's not an issue at a truck stop. But uh, on the motorhome market, we heard you loud and clear that we needed to have a fill on both sides okay. for both the entertainer and the motorhome market. And so I guess starting with that with the 15 or 16 builds, and then you're saying... It, it's, a, it's a VIN number cut in, um, so I'd have to look at it, but you're pretty close to the dates. We just looked at the filler cap and what needed to be done, now, whether you want to check it yourself or have it done when, when it's in for maintenance. What about a service schedule for TEF? Is that something different than your normal service? Service schedule, like anything else, is going to be very important and it's going to depend on how you use the vehicle. For motorhome use, we're talking about every 12 months, what we want to do is clean that strainer filter. And number two, we want to make sure that we have our technician change the filter inside our DEF pump. It's a screw-on filter, slides right up in place, but we want to make sure we maintain those systems. This is every bit as critical as your oil change or anything else. So if you have a DEF coat such as mine, or one that utilizes DEF, when I come in and say, okay, it's time for my annual service, is this automatically on there or is it something I need to request? Annual service is kind of a one-size-fits-all, so what has to happen is our service writer has to take a look and see what the year of the coach is. 
Obviously, if it's a 2007, it's not going to be affected by this, so it's going to be an add-on that we need to do for the newer coaches. Robert, let me take a moment and thank you for your time. Again, if you have any questions, comments, or opinions, just leave them below right here on YouTube, on GadgetGuru.com, or on your favorite motorhome forum. Now, if you like this segment, you might like this one. And if you like this one, then surely you'll like this one because there's a lot of motorhome and campground review sites online now at GadgetGuru.com. That's it for now. I'm the Gadget Guru, Andy Park.